Alright, well, I have um, I've only had to um, share a couple of times, so let me give this a try and make sure we have a screen that pops up. All right, if you see a screen, just holler at me. I don't see anything yet. Said it was broadcasting, so let's see. Let's try again. Broadcasting. I'm getting the countdown, so. How about now? Yes, there we go. All right. All right, well, I can see the screen. I can't see nobody else, but. Um, a quick introduction again. My name is Mitzi Reed, Director of Choctaw Wildlife and Parks for the Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians. I also serve as one of the li liaison officers between our um, partner agencies, uh, tribal biologist for the, the uh, reservation, as well as a coordinator of our Youth Conservation Corps. Um, so that's what I wanted to talk to y'all a little bit about today. Uh, I like really informal uh, discussions. So if there's something that you want to throw out there at the time, uh, please feel free to holler out. But uh, what we're going to do today is I'm going to give you a little overview of our 2021 CYCC session. We did have a session this year, face to face, a uh, four week session in the month of June. And so this is going to be just a, um, a little bit about the program and some uh, photos of the the program just to give you a little sense of what all we did uh, and then some what I thought were take a home take away um, lessons that were learned that were beyond the science part of it so we'll get going there again feel free to chime in at any time so this is basically how we were set up um, this is a grant that was received from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife um, services as far as our tribal wildlife grant program. And the point is a swamp cane initiative reserve program where students would come in and help us uh, with some habitat management to be able to uh, allow some of our swamp cane to thrive. Um, now keep in mind, some of that can get uh, overwhelming at times and sometimes there's some slow days. So we did intermix some other regular community service style uh, work involved in this program as well. Uh, so our grant limits us to 10 participants. We had nine apply originally. Uh, we ended up with five students to participate. Uh, two opted out. Um, I think their parents decided let's go on a summer trip rather than do some summer work. So they opted out uh, entirely. We had one that joined a youth opportunity program, which is another summer employment program here for students uh, for the reservation. And they offered her eight weeks of work versus uh, four weeks of work, being that she was gonna be one of the older ones fixing to graduate. I couldn't fault her for that, for you know, having an opportunity to work longer and make a little bit more money. So um, hats off to her. And then we had one that was selected to our Choctaw Central High School girls varsity team in basketball. And if you know anything about Choctaw Central basketball, um, they love it, they live it, they breathe it. So practices were like three days a week and scrimmages were two days a week. So that pretty much took her out of the, the running of participating with whoever with the program. Um, our application process, was a form application that was accompanied by a 250 word minimum essay. The essay basically asking the students to introduce themselves, tell us a little bit about themselves, um, if they were interested in working in the natural resource fields uh, and just try to get a, just a little bit of background from them as far as what they were looking at um, once they entered into the real world. 
Uh, along with that became a background check and drug screening because this is considered tribal employment with the reservation. So we went through all of that to prepare them also for the real world when that comes up. Uh, we had an orientation meeting with participants and a parent, uh, being that it was, we were still under some COVID restrictions. We only allowed one parent. Usually we try to utilize both parents if they're available. Uh, this was prior to the start of the agreement, I mean, to the session. And that was for us to go through what we have generated as a handbook that details um, all the information they would need to know, what's expected of them, um, what could get them dismissed from the program, so forth, so on. Um, and then we accompanied signature acknowledgements with that as well. Uh, other signature acknowledgements we included were um, waivers for any photographs, videos to be used for, you know, to promote the program in the future. Uh, the opportunity of this orientation meeting, we uh, we did it hand in hand with our drug screening so that we were to knock out all of that all at one time, being that we would need parents present for the drug screening and so forth, so on. So we, we tried to take that opportunity to, you know, kill two birds with one stone there. Um, <clears throat> participation, yes. Sorry, is this a paid internship essentially? This is a paid, paid internship. I'm glad you brought that up because I did totally leave that out. But they are paid $10 an hour for eight hours a day, uh, five days a week. So um, at the end of four weeks, you know, they, they, put a, they made a pretty good little substantial amount there, uh, especially for kids that probably this was their first time to get a check. So this was paid internship, yes, basically. Um, participation throughout the session was what we pushed. We wanted them to participate uh, just like anything that we do. There's things that we like to do and other things we don't like to do. Uh, but we did just ask for that participation. And then we um, asked for a 250-word minimum essay that served as an evaluation of the program. Uh, basically, we wanted to know from their eyes what's, what they saw that worked and what didn't work so that we could be able to um, maybe make changes to the program, so forth, so on, um, for future students. So that's the logistics part of it. Daily schedule is fairly simple, Monday through Friday, eight to four. Uh, we would keep the students here till 4.30 if parents worked and didn't get off till 4.30. So, uh, but most of the time they were usually picked up by uh, four o'clock. Mornings consisted of work, basically and that ranged from if we had to clean up an area, litter clean up to cutting areas, uh, some of the habitat areas that, for the swamp cane. And then other things as far as uh, painting, repairing structures, so forth, so on. Uh, lunch was on site. Uh, the first two weeks, we were fortunate to partner up with the tribal school summer school program. So uh, all we had to do was go and pick up the lunches for them. The last week, we did have to cater or deliver uh, food to those sites. Um, Afternoons consisted of various topics, and the next couple of slides will show you the breakdown of day-to-day -day activities. Um, consisted of various topics in the natural resource field. Um, we had some of our partners, and they varied from U.S. Fish and Wildlife, uh, National Wildlife Reserve, Mississippi State University, the Cooperative Extension Program, um, actual programs here on the reservation. So what they did is they came and talked about their current worker study, what, what they do, um, as well as I asked them to provide a brief description of how they got to where they were going. Did they have to go to school? What were their, what were their paths to, get to, uh, to do what they're doing now? So we wanted to make sure that was part of um, the discussions because all of us, um, although some of us, especially the biologists, we tend to have similar paths, um, we, we all had very different paths. And we also had very different role models uh, involved in it as well. And then we did throw in some field trips there. 
Um, fortunately, the grant allowed us to purchase a 15 passenger van so that we were able to um, transport students ourselves. In the past, we've done this program, we've had to um, bring on board a bus driver and actually use usually and actually a bus from our tribal school system. Um, on the field trips, those lunches were either um, paid for courtesy of donations from supporters to the program. Um, and then we had one additional chaperone escort the crew on all trips. So that was the nitty gritty part of it. Um, this first slide here is our work schedule. So it basically gave an outline of what they're probably gonna be doing and the location we would be doing it at. Um, a lot of our work was done on Lake Pushmataha, which is here in Choctaw, Mississippi, uh, because that is where we were wanting to establish our swamp cane reserves uh, so that we could better manage areas and better enforce the areas. Uh, but you notice there were a couple of areas in there that where we did go off site and go to other counties or communities to do some of the work there. Uh, the next slide is our outreach. So when I said we talked about various different topics, um, there's just an outline of the topics there. Uh, the first one is an introductory presentation that I give every year. Uh, basically, it's creepy crawlers, and that's just to introduce them to some of the creepy crawlers that they could come in contact with uh, while they're out there. So it could arrange from anything from insects and bees, all the way to up to snakes and alligators and wild pigs, so forth, so on. So at least gives them an idea of what to expect, uh, what might show up, and what they might be able to see. And then other than that, we broke it down. Uh, I won't read all of them there, but you'll, you'll notice it was, it's an array of everything. I will add that on our Swamp Cane Importance, which was the second day of the program, uh, we talked from we talked about the biology of the plant, the habitat management of the plant, and then we also talked about the cultural um, significance of the plant. Uh, swamp cane being uh, where our back, basket, basketry um, materials are coming from, for the most part, and then we did talk about a couple of other culturally significant plants that grow in the same areas that the swamp canes do. So. Um, but you can see an array of all types of things there. We did talk to um, media and communications because uh, part of our jobs uh, are either getting up in front of people and talking or um, some of us even have to talk in front of uh, media. So we wanted them to be able to be comfortable in talking in front of people. So we talked about things like that. A lot of hands-on things like with our um, trapping programs and our wild pig programs. Uh, they actually got to do some trap setups, uh, understand the mode of travel of the animal, uh, where would be good sites to set up traps, so forth, so on. So a lot of hands-on type things there. Uh, one of our biggest hits there was the drone program. And then um, we threw some fun, fun stuff in there. So we got water safety there, but that was off, that also accompanied the... Uh, water cleanup. So that's when the kids actually got into some canoes and some kayaks. So that's pretty much the rundown there of our day-to-day -day activities. Uh, before I get to some of the pictures there, which I'll run through you know, some, somewhat fairly quickly, uh, we did have some setbacks. Uh, we did have rain plans prepared if we were to be uh, inside somewhere because of the weather. Uh, we sadly didn't expect to use it all the first week but we ended up doing that. <laughs> so we had a rainy first week. So we did a lot of uh, alterations there. Um, that same week, one of our work sites was flooded. That was gonna be one of our entomology talks. So what we were able to do was to work it out with the entomology lab at Mississippi State University and created a spontaneous field trip up there. So not only did they get to see some of the critters there in the laboratory, we also went outdoors to uh, look at the different type of habitat that a lot of these uh, different types of insects uh, lived in. So it worked out. Uh, the one thing about 
working with any any program with youth is you've got to be able to um, make those quick uh, altered schedules as soon as you can. Another setback <clears throat> is uh, some of our uniforms and gear were delayed into the second week. So um, you'll see some of the pictures where they're still in regular clothes. Uh, we like to have them in some, um, uh, at least a t-shirt that designates them so that we can keep up with them. Um, but being, we only had five students, that really wasn't a big deal this year. Uh, another thing that got thrown in the mix is we were asked to assist with some of the tribal planning of the Choctaw Indian Fair. So uh, picnic tables were in big need of repair and painting and um, placing out at the fairgrounds. So um, the crew was uh, more than willing to jump in and take on that task. Um, one of, uh, probably one of my biggest setbacks is they did not get to see a snake or an alligator all season. Um, and so we even went on a field trip and I promised them that they would see an alligator because this place is notorious for them. And on that field trip, we did not see a one. So that's one of my personal setbacks. Uh, we did have to compete with uh, varsity high school sports. So a couple of guys, I had a basketball player and a football player. Um, they had to miss out on a day or two because of a camp or um, a scrimmage game. But fortunately it wasn't uh, other, no more than a day or two, so. But so now we'll get- hey, yes. Yes. So you're, the folks that participated in this, were they folks, that, were any of them returning or do you every year have new students? Um, I usually have returning students. This group, uh, we did take a year off because of COVID. Oh, COVID, right. Yes, and, so, and then we did have a year off because of some tribal administrative changes um, that uh, didn't allow us to um, have that, uh, that session that year. Um, okay. So th these were all new students, but I can tell you right now that they've had, they have already voiced their um, want to participate next year. Okay, and, cool. And being that all five of them were 15, um, this is a program that's set for 15 to 17 year olds. So they potentially could have two additional years. Okay, and that was my next question. So you answered it, thank you. <laughs> so some of the programs, uh, these are just snip snippets of what we did. The, um, the one on, I guess it would be your left, is um, them actually doing some of the drone work. So this individual, this, uh, this student here, when he was asked what he wants to do when he grows up, it was to be a video game designer. But um, this, this uh, class itself had him thinking that maybe I can put all of my outdoor wants and the video game thing into one and then do something similar to this and run drums. So um, we try to show them that you know, there's different avenues to get to different tasks. Um, entomology, they actually got to look at some little bugs. And, um, the one snake there, I wouldn't count him as a snake because he's a, he's a boa constrictor. So he's not a native species here, but they did get to play with him. He was uh, one of the uh, entomologist's uh, personal pets. So they brought him with us. Hey, snakes always make the, the program a little bit better. So we toured the entomology lab here in this photo. They got to see um, insects from not just Mississippi, but from all over. Um, so they got to see the big uh, bird tarantula there and some of the you other- have those guys. in Mississippi? No we, no, we do not. <laughs> okay. this, this, this was a trip, I believe, to Venezuela. Uh, oh my so God, they did, okay. Yeah, they did point out that they had those uh, elsewhere. But um, we do have some substantially large um, uh, wolf spiders. N nothing to this extent, but because I think I'll be going the other way if, if we did. Um, this is uh, where we wa walked out to the back and they got to see the different um, plants that were grown for the prairie, prairie pine belt area and then the insects that they would have seen there. Um, We've had biologists come out 
to the lake. This is Lake Koshmadaha here. This is the day we talked about turkey management. So um, this ended up being a, started off as a discussion of turkey management, but we ended up talking about all kinds of species. So um, what, I, what I enjoyed about these five students is they were not shy to jump in and ask discussion questions, which for me is a little bit different because most of, most of my time, my partic participants are very quiet. Uh, you really have to yeah. pull teeth to get something out of them, but these guys were ready to just jump in. I don't know if it's because it was such a small group or if it was because they were so familiar with each other, which is another situation that was unique because usually I get people from all over that really they've never met each other before. Um, trapping, this was uh, the USDA Wildlife Services came out and talked about trapping and we, we set the class for about an hour and 15 minutes. This class took three hours and it was because the students continued and continued and continued to ask questions. Um, what I loved about this is uh, the instructor and his, um, his boss, the state director came out as well, um, came out and let them do hands-on, uh, set their own traps, their foothold traps. And they came back and told me that they were impressed with the students that uh, these students, 15 year old students set up some traps that were remarkable and overshadowed some of their college students. So. I let the kids know that. So they thought that was pretty cool. And here's some examples of them doing stuff. So, so, I mean, they mixed some of these in. The one on your right there, after he blended everything in and then they were supposed to come back and set the trap so that someone wouldn't step into it. Uh, it took him a little while to find out where he set his own trap. So very impressive, but they, they really enjoyed this, uh, this, this day. Uh, this, we went to the Mississippi Natural Science Museum in Jackson, Mississippi, met with um, some of the individuals there. This is uh, Caitlin Cross. She is one of the big um, bat biologists there. And so they actually had an opportunity to take paper bats because obviously we don't want them handling real bats. Um, paper bats from the um, mist net that you may be able to see in the background there and then come back and identify what bat they were, they supposedly had caught. So it, it was, like I said, very interactive. Uh, they got a kick out of doing some of it, um, but yeah. So that program, this is a program. This is um, ornithology. We talked about ornithology and what they're doing here is they've got an array of different types of seeds in a bowl and different types of instruments that depicted the different type of, type of beak types that birds have and which um, instrument worked in collecting the seeds a lot easier than the others. So they got to see why birds have small bills, big bills, you know, shell crackers, uh, raptor beaks that pull meat, so forth, so on. So we, we took it all the way around to even down to what types of foods they ate. <clears throat> uh, the kayaking, this is a, uh, them on kayaks. None of them have ever been on kayaks. So uh, gave them something to do that was something new to them. Um, they got a discussion on water safety because we don't want to just get in a kayak. We want to know what we're doing and we want to be safe doing so. Um, that same day we had a presentation on water chemistry and these were basic water chemistries, pH, alkalinity, turbidity, so forth, so on. So they were able to see the, the uh, different processes in, in that water chemistry part of it. And then in that same day we seen fish, so they got to see the different types of fish that were in there. We talked about how you can determine populations based on those fish uh, that were collected in, in the same, so forth, so on. So all of it, we're trying to make it interactive. Uh, wild pig trapping, they, um, 
got to actually set up a trap. Uh, then we got to see how it worked in the front of it, how the drop gate dropped, so forth, so on. So again, all interactive. This was a visit to our Choctaw Fresh Produce program. Uh, this is a program even our students weren't aware that the uh, Mississippi Band Choctaw Onions do, but uh, the program grows um, organic. This is an organic farm, so our organically raised uh, vegetables, and then they're uh, distributed uh, for sale through the casinos, the schools, and some of the other programs. Uh, so the kids got to see something that was uh, right in their back door that they were never aware of. So, and then they got to see how hot it is under those hot high tunnels too. Um, I think this is the last slide before I get to the slides for the takeaways. But again, FG and forestry, you know, big, big components here in Mississippi. So we wanted to make them aware of what's out there, uh, what's some of the work that's entailed that could be opportunities for them in the future. So some of our takeaways, um, these are outside the realm of science, I guess what you would see this is observations that I've seen from these students and uh, from past students, but you get to overcome fear. Um, we encourage them to do something that they've probably never done before. We get them out of our comfort zones and each one of them here took turns to hold um, different types of insects that uh, most people will probably just cringe at. Um, defeating obstacles. Here they painted one of our fences excuse me, at Lake Pushmataha, um, they were advised of the importance of painting the fence so that we could protect the wood. The purpose of the fence was to keep people out of certain areas um, because of other work that's being done behind the fence. Um, but the obstacles were, this was a clear blue sky for two days in 90 degree humidity on a 98 degree day with only shade of an enclosed trailer. So. Um, they got to see that they can push through things. Uh, we made sure that they had plenty of bricks and plenty of water and um, electrolytes. But the cherry on top for them, I think, were when others, others came out and commented how great, um, how great the fence looked, how good of a job they did. And then we even had individuals come out and um, bring them donations of snack cakes um, things like that to help help them through their breaks. Well, it's pretty <clears throat> impressive considering the temperature and the uh, yes, humidity. Yes. I mean, holy mackinole. And they and they continue to do it. I'd, I'd be like, take a break, and they're still out there. Let me finish this one section. So wow. I mean, it just it just not only that. The next slide it, it created stewards. It yeah. It got them to see the other side of it. Uh, this was the, one of our first days. Um, they picked up litter on the side of a busy road. Um, they got to pick up uh, different types of trash. And the next day, we drove down this road and they saw that it was already littered again. So their frustrations, they, they told it to our media reporters how frustrated they were that they walked this um, half a mile stretch of road, picking up trash, sweating, getting hot, and it looked really good. And then the next day it was just trashed again. So not only that, uh, we had a class with the Gulf of Mexico cleanup program. And in that class, they used litter and trash uh, pollution as one of the topics to discuss. So um, it, it created stewards. It, it, it got them um, looking at the big picture. In fact, I've seen a couple of these students working with another group that goes out and cleans up some of our um, community ponds here. And I've seen them out there on their own time picking up trash. So, you know, it's just leaving those little, those little tidbits. Another takeaway is get back in the saddle or canoe in this, this uh, point of it. Um, it shows them that if they can continue doing what they're doing, no matter how many times you tip over and get drenched, when you get it right and you balanced everything out, you'll dry off feeling accomplished. Um, 
and then I also threw this one in there. They found they found out how much further they, they how further they can get once they've gotten their feet wet. So again, little take home things. And then here's a here's a thing that I think is probably one of the big take homes that I saw, and it's building leaders because you have that one unexpected student. Um, that steps up and encourages another student that can't swim that, hey, I'll partner with you. We're going to be fine. Uh, we'll get the hang of it. And before you know it, you, you see this uh, student that was uncomfortable the whole time become comfortable enough to go solo. And so I think that that's, that's the thing is have another student come up and say, hey, I got your back. Come on. And uh, we can do this together. And then before you know it, he's out there doing it himself. That's cool. Uh, biggest takeaway I told them is have fun, you know, show them that not everything has to be clean and proper. And then I'll, of course they pop down in the mud there, but um, they had fun. I let them know that unfortunately this lake here is restricted as far as uh, swimming, uh, so forth, so on. They can obviously kayak and canoe, but they can't swim in it. So I let them know that um, today was an exception for them, but I better not catch them out there doing it when they're on their own time. <laughs> and then the last one is you know, we went from an individual to a team because there is no I in team. So at the end of the day, these guys are still, um, a lot of them are big gamers. So I'd hear the conversations of them playing into the hours of the night, but the next day um, playing, uh, well, I know Fortnite. And kids told me they're, you know, there's so much more than Fortnite now. But, you know, they were playing these games into the wee hours of the night with each other. And I'm like, hey, y'all hung out all day, but you still playing games all night? So, you know, they became a team, you know. So... That's my takeaways. Um, if I can figure out how to stop sharing. Thank that you. is, that um, great. yeah, and it seems like a lot in, in four weeks. And we tried to, you know, show them all different arrays of what's out there. Of course, obviously, we couldn't show them everything. Um, but if I can just plant a little seed, maybe. Um, Somebody one one of these days they'll come out and take my job because that that's that's my goal is to get them to come back and take my job because yeah I love what I do and I tell them like, you're not gonna be you know you're not gonna get rich doing it but you know there's the rewards in it so, any other questions I'll be happy to I can talk all day sometimes so. So are you thinking of expanding it or is four weeks like the max that you can do just because of other schedules and other other programs that are going on? Yeah, four weeks is pretty much our max because uh, we're usually all the way up until June doing other things. And then we have to turn around. July is our Choctaw Indian Fair. So we're pulled away for, uh, you know, other things there, uh, state security, you know, fair security, things like that. Uh, so that usually is our time frame, but we are looking at some potential funding coming in. So I'm looking at maybe seeing if we can venture um, maybe a couple of split weeks in August before school starts. Um, maybe break it down where we have smaller sessions, like two weeks, you know, like sort of like our environmental camps that are around here, you know, two weeks versus four weeks. Um, and do it more of an internship style thing versus um, actual employment. Um, but I've seen, we've, we started CYCC or we, have, we, we reestablished CYCC in 2016. Um, it used to be here in the seventies, but we brought it back in 2016. And I, I've just seen, I don't know, I've just seen so, so many positives. I've seen um, these students apply to colleges Mm. I've seen these students, you know, take, uh, if they didn't go to college, they went into the workforce, uh, did something similar, if, you know, even if it was just groundskeeping, uh, things like that, but putting into place some of the things they learned, 
Um, and the biggest ones are seeing them go out there and volunteer. We've had them volunteer for some of our wildlife programs. Uh, we do a jamboree in September. Uh, they've come out and asked if they can help with clean up, things like that. But to get them to come up and say, hey, can I give you a hand? Um, all of that. I mean, like I said, it's yes, we want to teach them the science and we want to teach them uh, what's out there and how they can help. But the the real life situations that it affects, I, I think is a whole lot more. So once they complete this program, do they have a little bit more to work with on their resume for the other employment opportunities you were talking about? Yes, yes. Uh, they, they, um, I usually get a lot of calls for references. Um, uh, they put them on their resumes, things like that. Cause we do talk about some of that um, as well. Um, and then the other things, other areas it creates something, it, it creates them a safe zone. You know, they feel like they have someone that they can come talk to um, if, if there's a situation, because I tell them, you know in this program, out this program if you got something that you know you need to get off your shoulders I'm always available. You know, you, I, I, most of the time I like to just listen and usually they work out what they want to work out themselves. But, you know, just, I think just making those doors available to them because a lot of kids feel like they're just, you know, it's just them and nobody else. Thank you so much. That's a, that was a really good presentation. I didn't know that you guys did all that stuff. In four weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, COVID threw it back a little bit. This was a small enough group. Uh, and we toyed with it. You know, are we going to have it? Are we not going to have it? Uh, when we saw we had nine applications, we were like, well, I think we can still work with nine. When we found out we had five definite, I was like, well, we can definitely separate them enough. Um, you notice in some of the pictures, they didn't really separate very well. But fortunately, they worked all day that they slept all night. So they didn't really go anywhere else. So they were all with the same bunch for four weeks. So, and you know, it's, it's one of those trade off type things. But. And it seems like they were outside most of the time. It is, yes. We, we tried to do most of our outsides. If we were indoors, masks were required. Uh, in the van, masks were required. So. That's great. Did you have any issues with the. Uh, them getting to work, like having transportation? We did not. Um, all of these students were um, maximum 10, 10 minutes away from the work site. So um, we, we didn't have those type of issues. Now, um, I have had situations in, pa in the past. In 2017, I had two students from Jones County. Um, at that time, I was, um, I was a resident of that community. So they just got up a little bit earlier and, you know, came in with me. Um, if, if there was a way that we could accommodate them, if I had an officer coming from another community and they worked for us, you know, that from time to time they may bring them in type thing. But for the most part, we had, we had, they had pretty good transportation. Oh, you're lucky. <laughs> that's, that's one of our, our challenges. But. Yeah, um, you know, we've toyed with the idea of just keeping it local so that we're able to pick them up, drop them off. But, you know, it's sort of sort of a disservice for those that are out in the outside communities. So um, we try to work it out. Uh, definitely have conversations with the parents. You know, if, if for some reason they can't get here, you know, or if there's a transportation issue, you know, bring it to our attention. We might be able to work something out versus just let them stay home all day, so. Mm. Excellent. Well, I'll um, send this recording out so that everybody can see it. I, Sally was trying to get in and couldn't get in, but she's looking forward to seeing the presentation too. Um, and then, you know, I was thinking we could do another one of these in a few months if we have somebody else step forward that wants to present um, and just kind of keep it going. Sounds good. Yeah, I mean, I'd be happy to present on the waste program. Okay, awesome. Um, but I. Mitzi, I'd be curious, um, how many years, I know you said you had, you know, excluding COVID, um, how many years have you been doing this? Uh, uh, 2016, so that's be So you had 20, okay.
So you got a fairly good track record too. So that's good. Yes. Yes. Um, the first two years was a grant received through the division of schools. Uh, it, it really wasn't a wildlife program. Uh, the division of schools did it. And when I guess they, when they were like, who can coordinate this? They were like, well, it's all natural resource. Hey, where's Mitzi at? <laughs> so uh, we ended up with like 18 students the first year and 22 students the second year. Um, wow. I was able to recruit one of my um, wildlife officers who was an EMT as well. So we had EMT on site. Um, but that that was a rather large group for us. Um, yeah. So I think the 10 to 12 students, um, unless you have the staff. If you have the staffing, then you know have as many as you want. But um, for a student, for a ratio of 12 students, you need at least two, uh, two, two individuals to be there because there were times that, you know, I'd have to slip away for a meeting. I was able to bring in one of my rookies and he, you know, he s- stepped in in that role while I was at a meeting and then I jet back to the meeting. So it got a little hectic as far as trying to schedule other administrative duties um, or I did Zoom quite a bit, you know, while they were painting or something, I might've been on a Zoom call. Um, but so, you know, there's a lot of juggling, but one thing I would like to do eventually is hopefully get a position where I can have an education coordinator within the wildlife department mm. to be able to handle a lot of this. Uh, you know, it is, it's a full-time job, really, honestly, um, trying to coordinate all the drug screening and everything else as far as backgrounds. I mean, it's, it takes a lot out, but it's, uh, it's, most, it's most definitely worth it. Mitzi, I wonder if that's something that the tribe could set up with the NRCS as a cooperative agreement because having somebody on staff just to engage youth in those topic areas and in STEM field topics is huge. A huge oh, yes. For NRCS. Yeah, and, and bringing somebody in that can, and, you know, also talk about the, the cultural connection and how the, how you know, how that's all integrated because that really enhances the learning for the native youth and keeps them engaged. I mean, that's just so critical. Okay, well, I'll stop the recording here and I'll let uh, the other folks know if they have any questions, they can reach out to you, Mitzi. And then Tish, I'll work with you to find a time in the next couple months that you're available to do your presentation. Yep, that'd be great. All right, sounds good. Y'all stay safe. You too. We'll see y'all soon. All right, bye y'all. Bye. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Bye.